This episode is brought to you by my online masterclass for singers. This is a 12-week session in which we will meet every week with a small group of eight people, singers from all over the world to find your problems in your voice and to also find your strengths. You will get confidence. You will also get a clear direction on where you want to go vocally as an artist, as a singer, no matter whether you're singing in choir or solo on stage with a band, no matter what the setting is. This is for you. You also will get a one-on-one -on -one session with me in which we really identify your problems and really find your voice, your natural voice with which you can be happy for the rest of your life. It'll really give you a lot of encouragement, a lot of motivation, and also it'll push you to do things you've never done before. If you want to find out more information, jump over to my website, fryassingingtips.com slash masterclass. Let's get started with today's episode. This is episode 48, and today I want to ask the question, how can you keep your voice healthy for the rest of your life? Let's roll. Welcome to Freya Singing Tips, the podcast. My name is Freya Casey, professional singer and vocal coach. I have been on stage my whole life, and I'm passionate about helping you discover the awesomeness in your own voice. Opera, musical theater, jazz, pop, folk, rock, I have done it all. And I want to give you golden nuggets of advice on how to be the master of your voice. I've been asked many times, how can you feel that your voice is healthy? How do you know if something is damaged? And how, above all, can you keep your voice healthy? healthy for the rest of your life? This is one of the questions that I have always asked myself because I can tell when something is not good for me and when something works. And this is something that I'm I want to challenge you. Start really taking responsibility for your own voice. Start taking responsibility for what you do to your voice, what you do to your body, and also start feeling what is good for you and what is not good for you. What works, what doesn't work, how much is too much, how little is too little, how much practice should you do. Listen to those small signs and, you know, those small, subtle signs that your body sends you. What Does your body tell you? It tells you when something isn't good. When you have a bunch of phlegm, excessive phlegm, it's a sign of your body telling you something. So everything that is happening in your body that doesn't feel comfortable, it is your body telling you something. It may be that you're overcompensating. So, But let's get started. It's a huge tangent that I could probably talk about for hours and hours. But let's talk about a few things here. Now, first of all, of course, you know that Your body is your instrument. So it is different from being an instrumentalist. Any other instrumentalist, and I've talked about this before, has an instrument that is separate from their body. Yes, their breath may flow into it and their fingerings, their body posture may affect the sound of the instrument. However, no instrument in this whole world is so much determined by your body, by the way your body feels, the way your body is You know, the way your strength is handled and how you're managing your powers as a singer, you totally depend on your body because not only do you need your breath, you also need your resonating spaces and just your whole body. You need your language, your tongue, you need everything in your body. Really, your whole being is your instrument. And also as a singer, it's not only important to have the voice, but the whole being actually is able to convey something. So if you have just the tones, You may be a pretty singer, but you're not an awesome singer because an awesome singer also knows how to make things emotional and how to convey the meaning of the song that you want to actually really tell the story of. So let's talk about your body. Since your body is your instrument, you need to always keep your body as healthy as possible. Now, that is kind of the groundwork. That is the basics. That makes sense. That is just common sense. If your body is, is not healthy, your voice is going to be affected because your voice is part of your body. And if your body is weak, um, your voice may probably sound weak too. I've had some colleagues that were a bit overweight But that didn't affect their voice because overall they were fit. 
they were not unfit. They were actually quite sporty people and they could really handle some stress and some exercising. On the other hand, I have known some colleagues that were very skinny and you may have thought they're pretty healthy, but they were not fit and they were not, they never exercised, they didn't eat right, and that affected their voice so much more. And also as a performing artist on stage, don't ever underestimate how much work it is. It is so much work to actually perform. Just to sing at home in the studio may not be as much work as really putting yourself out there being in your body and actually performing, you are playing a role, especially when you're in musical theater or opera. It's not only demanding on your voice um, physically, which of course your body, you need the strength of your body. Your body really needs to, yeah, you know, just to, to, to put it out there, the voice, and you need a certain amount of strength. But also it takes so much strength from your body to actually play a role. I mean, have you ever tried to really talk to someone when something's really extremely important to you, when you are really into something, like wanting to discuss something, you're passionate about the issue that's being discussed? Have you ever paid attention to your body? It is a lot of work to do that, even just in a discussion without singing. Now, imagine when you're putting that with a singing. So you have the physical demands of the voice and the body and the support. And at the same time, you need so much support and strength and kind of tension in your body to convey that meaning, to be the actor, to have passion. Passion takes a lot of work in your body, even like try to act angry or try to act frustrated try to act uh, try to act in love it is a lot of work it, it takes strength so being an, a singer who exercises on a regular basis is so good i challenge you to also have a fit body it doesn't mean you need to be lifting weights every day, but what it means is have a strong body. The stronger your body is overall, the better you're going to be able to affect your voice in a positive way. Just because you have the strength, you have the foundation, you have the support from your core, which you can actually maintain and you can have that level of support and that level of strength throughout your performance. So train. Go for runs, go for walks even, but try to do something for yourself. Try to do something for your body that keeps your fit. If you're out of breath very easily, if you can't even you know, climb a, a flight of stairs without being totally pooped and out of breath, you probably need to be doing some work. So don't expect your singing to be excellent and um, full of power if your body is not really fit. So that is the first very important ingredient. Keep your body fit exercise. Now, of course, the second very, very important ingredient for being a great singer is actually foods and drinks. Now, how much that actually affects your singing short term, that totally varies from singer to singer. Now, I'm very blessed to not be affected by foods or drinks too terribly much. I could still drink orange juice or apple juice right before the performance or eat really hot food and I'll be fine. You, I don't want to challenge it or something, but um, for me, it doesn't affect me that terribly much. But the rules that I try to adhere to because it just feels better, I don't drink acidy stuff because it just feels better and I don't eat right before a performance because first of all, of course, when you have a really full stomach, it doesn't feel good because you need to really flex those muscles, your ab muscles and your midsection. And it's kind of like you're pushing on that midsection there and it doesn't feel good it's like they say you shouldn't swim with a full stomach with a full belly that's the same with singing it just doesn't feel good and it's it that you don't really have a good feeling for your body then because when you're bloated and you're really terribly full it is not good it's just like plus you may burp that's one thing when you've just now eaten that's just a reaction of your body just like whenever you're singing it's kind of like holding your breath and your body's reaction is to want to burp to let the gas out that's de that develops when you're digesting that's just what happens now another side effect of course when you have just now eaten it's just like you're salivating while you're eating also in your throat a lot of phlegm is being developed there and it's just like your body produces phlegm and mucus that's just how it goes so you may want to eat just 
at least one or two hours before you perform. I don't like to eat right before. Sometimes I have gigs where I have to eat in my breaks and I do that. But what I notice is that, you know, the burping part, that does come along every once in a while. So you want to be careful. Even taking a drink in between, make sure, I try to make sure that I only drink water, still water, no spring water. I mean, like no carbonated water, nothing carbonated. That's terrible. Because that holding your breath while you're singing, it's kind of like holding your breath when you're singing just because you're, you know, you're not letting a lot of air out as if you were breathing naturally, very relaxed. That really, really is conductive to your burping. It just is. And that's not very pretty when you're singing in tone. And you go like, yeah, oh, goodness, it just got stuck in my throat. So you don't want that to happen. Now, there may be foods or drinks that you may be sensitive to. But like I said, if you are in touch with your body, you know what's good for you and what's not good for you. It's different for everybody and there's not a rule that applies to everybody. Like I said, for me, I'm very blessed that I'm totally not really reacting to food or drink too much. However, you should always pay attention to your own body because you're different from anybody else. Alcohol. Now, I try not to drink alcohol just because the main reason is that I just get tired when I drink alcohol and um, I do like a good glass of wine every once in a while but when I'm performing I do not drink it's zero I drink zero alcohol the day of my performance just because it makes me tired my reactions are slower and I'm not in touch with my body as much as you know when I'm having absolutely no alcohol alcohol just has a has an effect on your body that's just a fact I mean I can for me I can totally tell when I had a half glass of wine I can already tell that it's affecting my body so I don't want that effect on my body when I'm singing I want to have 100% I want to be in tune with my body I want to I want to pay attention to the smallest minutest you know variations in my body so I can react to them there may be certain medications there sometimes you may need them however I always try, like when I have a simple cold, I try to heal it or I try to make it better and ease the symptoms by very natural remedies, like drinking sage tea, drinking ginger tea. And by the way, ginger is awesome. It's awesome for your body overall. And it's also very good for your voice. Strong ginger tea, tea. just peel and cut up some fresh ginger into slices and then pour hot water over it and let it sit for a while, for quite a while, I mean for hours, till it's very spicy and drink that, it does wonders. It really, that warm water flowing over your, you know, it doesn't really go over your vocal cords, but it flows down your throat. That warm water in combination with that ginger, it is really good. It keeps you healthy and it also is good for your voice. It, It's antibacterial and it's good for circulation. So ginger tea is something I absolutely recommend. But if you do have to take medications, be aware of the fact that some of them, first of all, may they may make you drowsy just a little bit. Second of all, they may interfere with your, you know, fluids productions like your mucus, your phlegm. They may cause phlegm on your vocal cords, but they may also dry out. They may dry out your vocal cords, your throat, your you know, your whole vocal tract there. So you may want to be careful. Anything with menthol usually is drying out when you have too much of it. So you don't want to really use anything with too much menthol in it. Try to find out how you react. Like I said, everybody is different. So try it out and see what the effect is on your body. Basically, you want to try to stay away from any medications. Anything that takes away the natural way you feel your body you want to try to stay away with it. Of course, there are times in life where you it's just necessary and by all means, take the medications. But always be aware of the fact that it probably is affecting your body and your voice to where it's not working like it would without all of that going on. So while you're sick, always be careful just because your body is not operating at maximum efficiency. You're always somehow impaired so just be aware and don't overdo it but also don't be totally freaked out and scared and just I don't know try to work with what you have and pay attention to your own body I will say that again and again find out what's good 
for you, how much can you handle, how far can you go. Pay attention to your body, be in touch and notice those little signs and signals that your body sends you throughout the day. It's the small things, many, many small things to where you can tell, am I feeling good? Is my body in good health? What signals and signs is it, is it, is it sending me? Okay, the next thing is sleep. Sleep is so important. And I don't ever underestimate. Have you ever noticed that right after you wake up, your voice is shot? It's because your circulation is just not going on yet in your body. I mean, like your blood flows, but it doesn't really flow into the little nooks and crevices yet. You know what I'm talking about? Like your vocal cords, they're not life. They're not necessary to sustain life. So whenever you're sleeping, it's kind of like your body only sends blood to the very important body parts to, that are necessary for life. And then everything else that is not necessary for life, um, it's just, it's less. It's just like, turn it down, slow it down. And then right after you wake up, Always pay attention to, okay, what does my voice do? So don't start singing out loud right after you wake up because your vocal cords are not full of blood yet. There's no circulation yet and you're going to hurt yourself because they're not operating at full efficiency yet. Do a warm good a good warm-up. That's the reason why you always should do a good warm-up. But especially after you slept, you should do an even longer warm-up if you happen to have to sing early in the morning. You can sing early in the morning, but it's just like doing sports. You know, you just don't get up and start lifting heavy dumbbells. That'd be a dumbbell, right? You start very light. You start warming up. You start doing some cardio. And then as the blood flow increases in your body, then you start slowly increasing intensity. And that's the same with your voice. But on at the same time, sleep is so, so important. I mean, I can tell when I haven't slept, my voice is just rough and doesn't work. It's just very, very tough. So make sure you get enough sleep because it will keep your body healthy. Another thing that's terrible for your voice is actually crying. Now, of course, there are times in your life where you may cry, maybe for the women even more. Um, guys supposedly don't cry that much, although I think it's sometimes maybe good just to cry it out. But after you cry, be aware of the fact that your voice most likely will be pretty shot. Um, and then maybe you should take a day rest or so if you happen to have to cry or something. Also shouting out loud, that's terrible for your voice. So try to avoid any prolonged periods of time where you really use your voice in a manner that's not very controlled and shouting out like, you idiot, I told you this. See, like that's not controlled when you're really angry or something or sometimes it may be a matter of life or death. When you have little children, sometimes you have to go like, stop, stop, stop on the street I mean, it's very important or sometimes my dog I'm like get over here um yeah sometimes I have to do it but I can tell right afterwards it's like okay that's not the best thing for my voice I could totally tell I was just putting demands on my voice that it doesn't like and if I did that for any prolonged period of time it would tear away on my voice so the really important thing is to keep your voice healthy you always have to think cumulative so all those little things you do every single day, every single day you do something to your body, you do something to your voice, it's going to affect your voice. Now smoking, I don't even really want to talk about it too much because I think it's absolutely common sense that smoking is not really good for your body and it is not good for your voice because it passes through those air passages directly so i'm not gonna say too much about it i never understood why anybody won't want to smoke because i'm i'm a, I'm a strong non-smoker i've never smoked i tried i think when i was like i don't know in 10th grade or so i tried one single inhale um actually it was part of a theater piece that we're trying to put on because i mean we're i was even not not really inhaling i was just kind of taking it into my mouth like puffing and i died and I never, to this day, I never understand. I mean, I never understood why does anybody want to smoke? I mean, that didn't taste good. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted in my whole life. I mean, probably I haven't eaten really disgusting things because I just wouldn't. So why would anybody want to smoke? I understand that, you know, it 
it come it gets to the point where it does taste good it's maybe like strong liquor which i don't drink either because it's too strong it's like it burns but i guess you could get used to some things and then they you acquire a taste for them but smoking i don't know to me it's just very common sense that it's not a really good healthy thing to inhale air that is that polluted into your lungs and to let it pass through your vocal cords and through your whole air passages it's common sense And yes, there are many singers who smoke that have been smoking for years and they still have a pretty good voice. However, why do I want to do that to my body? It's totally unnecessary. Find something else. I mean, it's like, really, seriously, there are thousand things. I mean, maybe you just eat some really expensive food. That way you wouldn't have to eat too much food, but like have really gourmet food. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't really cost more than having a few packets of cigarettes a week. But at least it's a little bit more healthy for your body. I mean, like, just try to spend more money on eating healthy food. What about that? It'll really actually do you good. And yes, I know that some people, they can smoke all their lives and they never get lung cancer and they are fine, they're healthy. That may be the case. However, if you just, you know, take an average, it's like, why do I want to take the risk of even putting myself in risk, you know. Why, why do I want to put myself at risk, at risk to get cancer or to get anything? I mean, I'm already at risk just living in the world. Why do I want to add any extra risk to, you know, my health? I don't want to try to avoid anything that adds extra risk. So, I mean, anything that's common sense, I'm um, just trying to live by common sense, right? So, Smoking clearly is not the best thing you can do for your voice. And if you are a smoker, hmm, maybe you should really think about it. Maybe you should think about quitting. And if you don't smoke, congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> so the common thread throughout everything that I just said was be in touch with your body. And I think that goes for your overall health, being in touch with your body is only really possible when you leave it when you leave everything as natural as possible so it's not faked it's not influenced by anything it's like raw it's just your raw body and you have a feeling i mean kids are really much very much in tune with their body they cry a lot when they're hurting but then they stop quickly again it's like you're totally in tune you can totally feel when something itches it's like okay i feel that itch on the tip of my finger I feel that nerve or I feel that nerve pinch between my ribs. Have you ever had that? That's painful. But you know, okay, that is just a nerve. It's getting pinched. Maybe I should just stretch. It is not my heart because that's not what it feels like. That would be different. It's just a nerve pinch between my ribs. I should stretch my torso and then it gets unpinched and gets, you know, gets back to normal. Breathe deeply. Don't freak out. Just be in touch with your body. The same with your breathing. You know, like when you have a cold, assess your body. Is my breathing impaired yet? Are my vocal cords impaired in a way that I can feel that it's not really doing me good when I sing? Then I should shut up. Or is it to where if I do light exercises, it's actually kind of good for my voice because it increases blood flow and it it very gently massages my vocal cords if, I, if I'm not too breathy. It's your decision, but you can only make those decisions when you're very much in touch with your body and you notice those really subtle signs and signals your body is sending you. So pay attention to your body and your voice will thank you by working for the rest of of your life. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome to have a very nice and clear voice even when you get older? And um, yes, your voice will change throughout your life. It will always keep on changing. Also, when you're going through hormonal changes in your life, like in puberty or whenever you're going through menopause for women, your voice will keep on changing. But um, you know, there are some older people that have really great voices because they have not abused their voices. They don't really age so much. I mean, the voice also, it's like your skin ages a lot quicker and a lot more and a, more drastically when you're out in the sunlight a whole lot. So when you've been, if you've been tanning for 30 years, 
um, you will be able to tell your voice, um, your your skin, yes, your voice too, your skin will be a lot more wrinkled than someone who always put sunscreen on or didn't just go into the full out, full out in the sun too much. So things will have an effect and also on your voice. When you've abused your voice a lot and put a lot of strain on the voice and never let, get, gave it time to recuperate or you never sang in a healthy way, you were always hoarse. If you do that for 30, 40 years, it will take a toll and your voice will change. It will age so much faster. So I'm all about not not wanting to get old. It's like, it's totally normal. Every year when I have my birthday, I look forward to it. I'm like, okay, I'm getting older. So what? That's cool. I'm still feeling good. And I know already that I will get to an age one day to where my body isn't working quite as good anymore as it is now, that it will get older and it will get harder. Things will get more difficult because my body doesn't have that much strength anymore. But now, every single day, I'm trying to contribute to a future to where I didn't demand so much stuff of my body that it's just going to make it worse in the future. I'm trying to work together with my body because I'm in my body and I need it for the rest of my life. And also my voice, I'm trying to use my voice in a way to where I have a feeling that everything is well and that I know the next day I'm not totally shot and I know that what I do on an everyday basis for the next 20, 30 years is going to determine how my voice works when I'm that much older. And I'm planning on singing for the rest of my life and to speak. I also love to speak. I mean, your speaking voice is just as important. And wouldn't it be weird if one day you had this very hoarse speaking voice and you can't really have a clear voice anymore? I mean, keeping your voice young is also a really cool thing. I mean, like, maybe you should have that goal of like, when you're 70, you should have this very nice young voice. And I think you can with training. All right, this is already getting pretty long. We're getting on to 27 minutes here now. One more announcement. If you have not joined my Facebook group, Master Your Voice, I would love to see you in the group. We have awesome discussions there and there are great singers. I'm always impressed at all the talent there is and I'm very inspired. Now, lately I have not had so much time to be in there, but some things have changed in my life. I got some help now. Um, just on a personal side note here, I just got an au pair girl, which means... I have someone living with me now and she provides up to 30 hours of childcare every week, which means it doesn't mean I'm spending less time with my daughter, but it means I spend a lot more quality time with my daughter. And since I do work a lot from home, it's really cool because she can stay at home, she can be here in her comfort zone and someone's with her, playing with her, doing quality time, and then I can really focus and work. I can teach my students and I can also do my podcast and my videos for YouTube and really focus on my work. And then when I'm done, I can really concentrate on my daughter, which I've been wanting to do that forever. And I don't know why I haven't thought about the au pair. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't thought about that before. It is so awesome. I got someone living with me now. Um, I got someone to talk to other than a child, which of course I have a lot of friends, but um, you know how that is. Just the little things every day on, at the breakfast table, dinner table, and just everyday little things. And she helps me. She helps me so much. Um, she's from Spain. She's a really wonderful girl. And she lives with us now, which means I'm going to have so much more time to really take care of, you know, I'll really be in my Facebook group and dedicate some time to it. I would love to see you there and be part of the discussion. It's called Master Your Voice. You can find it on Facebook. There's like almost 700 members in there now. It's really awesome. It's grown a lot. Also, one more time, I wanted to remind you that I do have a couple of online courses. One online course um, is the Conquer Your Stage Fright course. Um, it's $30 and it's a course in 12 lessons. So if you have a feeling that when you're getting on stage, you're not quite yourself or you're getting so nervous, whether it's singing wise or just even speaking wise or getting in front of people, it will really boost your confidence and will help you be more of yourself when you're in front of people. You know how that goes. You freeze up and you basically can do what you wanted to do. Mm, 
but you're not quite being yourself. The presentation, I mean, the content is fine, like you're singing maybe just fine, but you feel like you're totally stiff and you're not really performing as much and you're not telling the story because you're not connecting to yourself. And like, again, you don't feel your body and you don't feel yourself. It will really help you. It's 12 video lessons. And you can also join that by going to my website, friassingingtips.com, always with a hyphen. I have another course that is free. It's called Seven Days to Perfect Support, since support is the basic foundation of everything on which all your singing will build. It is so good. It has exercises that really are exercises. It's a workout for your support muscles. So if you have not taken it, go ahead and take it. It's free and um, it's seven days, seven lessons and you will be a lot more aware of where the support is and what it is and how does it, how does it feel when you are supported when you're not. All right, folks, that's all for today. Don't forget about my online masterclass for singers. Just a few more spots left. I'd love to see you there. Until next time, don't forget, watch my YouTube videos until then. And always keep on singing and always keep a song in your heart. Bye for now. Bye for now.